Born in 1951, 67-year-old veteran Kenyan politician James Agri Bob Orengo is now the longest-serving member of parliament in Kenya, having been elected for the first time as Ugenya MP on the then one-party Kanu ticket in a by-election in 1980. He is the longest serving MP for Ugenya. Orengo attended Ambira Primary School in Ugenya before joining Alliance High School in 1985. He says that is where his activism started. And because of my activities in Alliance School, Alliance High School in the drama society, historical society, in the debating club. I think I picked up uh, some um, inclination towards uh, activism. And I think the um, thing that uh, really had an impact on me eventually was when I went to <coughs> the University of Madagascar on a scholarship, although I was there just for six months. He later joined the University of Nairobi in 1971 and was elected president of the student union while in his second year. During the 1973-1974 academic year, he led the first ever student strike in the university. This followed the discontinuation of the entire final year students of the architecture department. He led a student school to wrest the prestigious architectural department from the firm grip of Asian and European students. Former Vice President Professor Joseph Karanja was the Vice Chancellor at that time. They were failed. No, none of them passed the examinations. It was a famous uh, Jorgensen crisis. And um, we felt that there was a, a certain degree of racism because, you know, the uh, profession was dominated by, by, by white people, Europeans at that time. And we felt they were trying to have some kind of control in the uh, um, uh, population of production of architects from the University of Nairobi. So we, we, the entire university went on strike and uh, the university was closed and eventually, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the university administration said we were expelled, all the student leaders. Uh, we went back to the campus under the mantra that without the student leadership being admitted back, there will be no university. And that campaign went on and on and on, and eventually the uh, university administration had to relent. That was 1970. This. After completing his university education, James Orengo transitioned into a political activist. As late as 2017 and at the age of 66 years, the now Siaya senator was still leading street protests, a position he says will not change anytime soon. And I think it, it started while I was at the at, at Alliance High School. Uh, and then eventually, you know, when I was at the university, and I've never really stopped because one of the things I believe that uh, uh, um, uh, vigilance is very important. Uh, however much you think you've reached certain goals. The seasoned politician says the more things change, the more they remain the same. And his mantra is one, once an activist, always an activist. My belief is that uh, in a society, even the mature democracies like exist in the West, without persistent and constant vigilance, uh, achievements of the past to which people have sacrificed their lives uh, and their uh, personal comforts uh, would be compromised and diluted. Uh, and, and therefore, I find it quite 
um, within my personal DNA, if I may put it that way, you know, to continue in this course. And uh, um, I pride myself uh, not uh, with uh, any arrogance, uh, but I think I've been true to the cause. And I think uh, in whatever circumstances, whether in parliament or outside parliament, uh, I would continue to do the same things. Uh, the same way, but probably using the different tools. One of the events that uh, normally come up to my mind, uh, you know, to, to, react, to react to this question, was when I had left campus and uh, J.M. Kariki uh, was assassinated. I think that was 75. And, and, and I, I went back to campus and I said, you know, you people must get out and condemn uh, this uh, heinous uh, brutal uh, murder. His sharp legal mind that bore the established lethal advocate that he is landed him in parliament in 1980 when he was elected as MP for Ugenya in a by-election, a seat he lost three years later in 1983 when he was forced to seek asylum in Tanzania after escaping through Uganda. He was linked to the 1982 aborted coup. I was arrested and charged with trumped up charges, including, you know, uh, these mileage claims. Um, and uh, there was a day when I, I was in Parliament and uh, I had a conversation with uh, the late Ole Tipis. And Tipis said, told me, uh, and, and, you know, um, and he was a little bit tipsy. He said, you know, we have other ways of dealing with you, uh, like we have dealt with uh, people like uh, J.M. Kariki, uh, but for you, I've now signed your detention orders. He was at that time the Minister for State in charge of internal security. And, and he was telling me this thing, um, 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 uh, Mr. Joseph Nyaga, who was then a minister in the government, uh, uh, followed me where I went to sit with other people and he called me aside and he said, don't take it as a joke what you're, you're being told uh, by uh, Mr. Tippis. Uh, uh, confronted as a politician, but if you feel that uh, these people may mess you up, uh, the decision is yours. So after some consultations, I, I decided to, you know, to go to seek asylum in Tanzania, although I went through Uganda. And I, my personal life was messed up a bit because uh, I, I lost my f mother during that week. Um, you know, and uh, I remember we buried her on a Saturday, and on Sunday I was off. However, as fate would have it, his asylum was short-lived. Together with other fugitives in Tanzania, they were extradited to Kenya. Uh, what came out to light later on, and uh, the, the, the Prime Minister at that time, Mr. Sokoine, was the one who, who led the negotiations between Kenya and Tanzania in this exchange. Uh, and uh, we were sure that Tanzania would never have done that. In fact, there was a lot of international condemnation of that uh, exchange. But they did it because they were looking badly uh, for these nationals who had ran into Kenya. His would-be safe haven turned into a nightmare. After critical diplomatic calls between Nairobi and Dar es Salaam, certain hard choices were inevitable. The asylum seekers were thrown under the bus. He found himself on a treacherous journey back home. I've never had uh, such a rough ride in my life because we were lying on the floor of a truck with the uh, police boots on your head. You're being told all sorts of things and, uh, uh, you know, uh, being um, dead as to how you could plan to overthrow the Kenyan government. The Kenyan government has got a long hand, you can't hide. Uh, and we were all driven to, to commit uh, prison. 
Uh, the first three months while we were at committee, we shared a cell with, with, with the Chuka and the Pancras Hotel, uh, which, which uh, we thought gave us uh, some latitude of, you know, uh, company and sharing uh, experiences and so on. Orengo had lost his parliamentary seat and now his freedom. It was now a new life in detention for anyone suspected to have been part of the attempted coup. So, but after three months, we were moved again to Naivasha Maximum Prison. And there, uh, we were put in the same block but separate cells. Each person uh, had a cell three or four cells away from uh, the other person. Uh, first week was okay, second week was okay, although we were in solitary confinement. We allowed only half an hour to go out, you know, individually, not as a group. Go to the toilet, and the toilet, you're not using the toilet, you're, 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 you're getting rid of what you're done <laughs> during the night because you had a bucket and so on. And then you have that cold shower, uh, and then you, you're given 15 minutes of sunshine. When this now started the interrogations, that's when I, I, I had an experience in life that uh, I hope I'll never go through again. Uh, because what they would do in order to force you to talk is to fill up the cells with water, uh, ankle deep, you know. Um, and uh, they would put outside the cells on, on the space under the door, they put sand and gunias to make sure that the water doesn't come out. And you're thrown in that cell naked. And until and you're, uh, you're ready to talk, you, 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 you'll be left there. Uh, the only thing they would do through the people to find out whether your condition was uh, manageable or not. His detention lasted for nine months. Others were incarcerated for several years, with some even dying while in prison. One morning, I was woken up, uh, put in a, a Land Rover uh, uh, with blinded windows and driven to Kisumu. And they told me, when we reached Kisumu, they said, you're now on your own, you can go. <laughs> Uh, that also is quite a terrible feeling, you know. You want to be free, but there's a day when you're, told, you're, you're, you're driven to some place, and where you're dropped, they don't want anybody to see them dropping you. <laughs> so I had a little debate after I was pushed out of the, of the Land Rover. What time of the day? It was about, uh, about two in the afternoon, because we, we were driving slowly from Navasha, from about 10. Uh, so when I'd been thrown out with my little luggage, again I told the officer, you know, for me to walk like this, looking for a place, I have no money, I have, of course those days there were no mobiles, uh, you know, I don't like this. Um, but then they said, okay, okay, where, where do we drop you? And this was a place near the, um, the bus stop in Kisumu, but quite a way uh, from the public. So I said, take me to Grace Onyango's house, Honorable Grace Onyango, because we were there in Parliament. 